Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Full Pelt Music podcast from us at Full Pelt Music. Shortly we will be joined by Sunflower Bean and we'll be chatting to them about their upcoming new album Head Full of Sugar. We've also added their recent single Who Put You Up To This on our Spotify hot list so make sure you check that one out. But before we get started the usual reminders from myself. If you would please do follow us on social media. We are on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And again, if you would, please do hit that subscribe button and hit that like button wherever you are watching or listening. Welcome, uh, Nick from Sunflower Bean to the Full Pelt Music podcast. We're delighted to have you on. How are you today? I'm good. I'm just on the way home from the last show of our first leg of our US tour. Um, so yeah, as, as you said, Nick, you guys have just finished up your uh, run of dates in the uh, US, including some shows at South by Southwest. So, you know, how were the shows? They were awesome. We're super happy to be back on the road. It's how we started as a band playing shows. And we really like touring. We're very close friends. So we enjoy spending the time together. And we're also like an extremely live band at heart where there's a lot of improv and a lot of like kind of off the cuff unhinged musical interludes that we like to go on tangents on and it's just been really fun yeah and uh, i believe they're the first run of shows that you've done since before the pandemic so you know how was it to get back out in front of the live crowd it was maybe a little bit like getting back on a bike for the first show we were kind of out of practice but then by the second one it felt like we had never left <laughs> yeah yeah um and obviously um you guys have been playing some new material uh on the shows as well so you know was it good for you to uh get that out in front of a live audience here what was the reception like to the new material definitely it's been awesome uh most of the songs on the new record were written in a way that we had never done before where okay it was a little bit more like we were switching instruments and like doing loops and like going back and overdubbing a lot. And we kind of built the songs into like a three piece rock setup that is really exciting and a little bit more like raw and bare bones and heavy. So it's been really great. Yeah. And the new album that we speak of is called Head Full of Sugar and it comes out on May the uh, 6th. So what should yes. fans expect from the album? Um, I think they should expect something that is fun and enjoyable and primary colored. There's a lot of big drum beats. There's a lot of fuzzy bass lines. And most importantly, the vocals are all very at the forefront. And there's a lot of melody and it's not a very pretentious record and it's not a super ornate record. It's just sort of a put it on and bob your head but also it has a lot of subtext and a lot of meaning if you want to read into that too <laughs> yeah and we'll dive a little bit into that in just a second but um first cool. you've, you've uh, piqued my interest obviously you talked about a slightly different recording process for you guys for this album um so could you just talk us a bit more through that and if there was any impact at all from the pandemic on the recording process for you guys yeah, we home, we home recorded the record for the most part. We did a ton of it in our basement practice space in Long Island. Our drummer, Olive, engineered the record. Yeah. And because of the pandemic, we had two years to work on it, basically. We had nothing but time. And it allowed us to just, like, really experiment by... Not really by, like, going crazy with, like, miking amps in weird places and doing all that stuff. It was more, like, experimentation by, like, talking a lot and writing a lot and just seeing where, like, all these different ideas went. Yeah. And um, to finish the record, we worked with a producer named Jacob Portrait. Basically, we'd send him whatever we were working on remotely, and then he would add in little things or change things slightly. And at the beginning of summer 2021, we all went to the studio together in Electric Lady and basically finished the record. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I've spoken to a number of, number of bands uh, in recent weeks um, about the recording process they've had during the pandemic. And as you mentioned, having that extra time that you probably wouldn't mm -hmm. normally get. Some artists have actually said to me that they struggled with that because they um, found themselves going back to the songs and tinkering with them when perhaps 
you know, historically that song would have been a finished piece. Um, they wouldn't have had <laughs> yeah. that time to go back to it. Is that something you felt as well? Um, not too bad because we wrote a ton of songs. We wrote like an absurd amount of material and recorded <laughs> an absurd amount of material and we weren't really precious about anything. So it wasn't like a whole ton of like nitpicking. It was more just like writing, like maybe like writing and recording like a song a week. And then if something wasn't working, we just move on. So it wasn't like a ton of like nitpicking. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, to get that other side of it as well. Um, it obviously worked really well for you. And the results, you know, from what we've heard so far have been fantastic. And um, you just put out the single Roll the Dice. Um, and this, this is where perhaps we can dig a little bit into the, themes of the album because i think um, <laughs> the the themes for roll the dice in particular are, are something that you know pretty much everyone can understand but um for fans that maybe yeah. haven't picked up on it please do just explain a little bit around the themes of roll the dice well i think i think it's a funny song because it is sort of this like very cynical embrace of the grind set and competition and capitalism and even though it is like obvious like you know the lines making rich another man are showing that like in the end like you are being exploited there's also this part of us that is very competitive and like when we're screaming win 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 over and over and over again we're talking about like you know this vicious cycle of competition and this economic system that pits every human against each other but we're also talking about our band and our career and our music and i think that people can relate to that that like there is like this like sort of um, cynical embrace of, you know, this like really cruel <laughs> um, <laughs> world we live in. Yeah, no, definitely. Like you say, I think everyone um, can really understand um, you know, what the, um, the song is about there. We've all felt it. Um, and yeah, because we're all struggling, you know, we've been yeah. making music as a band for a long time and we love touring and we love doing it but it's also really hard and it's really difficult yeah. at times and you just want to keep on pushing yeah definitely and yeah unfortunately you know things just seem to be getting harder and harder both you know for everyone in the yeah. world obviously and, and for musicians as well you know i mean the pandemic has had a catastrophic effect on many aspects of the industry and in, in the uk as well things like brexit haven't helped with the ease of touring um so yeah obviously mm -hmm. it's a really relevant song at the minute yeah yeah um and the uh the video for the song is uh obviously yeah fantastic video and actually links in as well with your previous single um who put you up to this and the two videos mm -hmm. kind of run into each other and tie together which is quite unique um so where did the concept for that come from um it it came from actually funny enough it came from a budget issue it's cheaper oh, okay. if you shoot two videos together <laughs> and then we were like, well, this is actually an opportunity to make something really cool. Yeah. And I actually wrote the treatment for both of the vids after we had like multiple meetings with a bunch of directors. And when we kind of gave them like a little bit of a direction where we said we wanted to do something that doesn't make us look like, you know, a lot of music videos are just like sort of posturing and trying to look cool yeah. or like being like this alien like ornate set and we were like we want to make something that feels like a little bit like gritty and real and down to earth in a way that the record is concerned in things that are down to earth and like everyday yeah. experiences so we took who put you up to this which is the song about like kind of like breaking free out of the confines of your life and it could be seen as being like romantic in a way because it's like sort of sounds like it's an address addressing an ex-lover or something and we kind of wanted to flip that to make like the who put you up to this to be like who's putting this person up to committing this crime mm. like almost like asking yourself like what circumstances have led me to like being in this hotel room like smuggling all this money <laughs> yeah. and um it was kind of important to us that like we handled like that whole theme of like criminality and like desperation with a lot of respect because it is unfortunate that these things happen to people and you fall into a place where you have to you know do insane stuff to try to better your life and yeah we really wanted to make sure that the money wasn't seen as like this like sort of like bling or like you know like fetish fetishization of it we wanted it to be like this really like 
sort of like monotonous and like static thing that was just sitting there that had to be dealt with, like almost like a burden. And then yeah. by the time you get to the roll of the dice video and the money's been stolen by the women at the hotel room, it becomes like this thing that everybody's celebrating while also fighting over. Yeah, no, they work really, really well together. Um, so it's interesting, obviously, to hear that it came from, you know, and it makes perfect sense, you know, um, to um, save money before the two videos at once. And obviously it kind of almost, <laughs> in, a, in a way, ironically fits into the themes of um, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't even thought about it, but I guess it makes complete sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It comes full circle completely. And obviously, listeners, you need to check out those videos. You can find them on YouTube. Follow the links that we'll have in the the bio for, for this episode to get there. Um, Thank yeah, you. No, yeah, um, smashing videos um, and, and great singles. Um, and obviously, yeah, going back to to the live element of um, the uh, music industry. Um, and you guys obviously just finishing up on shows. So another unique thing that you guys did uh this week on saturday was live stream your nashville show um how was that experience for you it was cool um yeah. exit in is a great venue and we were excited to be back we hadn't played nashville in almost five years and um it was a really cool experience i mean it, it felt like a like a normal show there actually weren't yeah. any camera people there it was all um automated Mm, which is yeah. kind of insane <laughs> yeah, i didn't even really understand it until i saw it afterwards <laughs> that like you know i didn't know where to look because the cameras were so well hidden <laughs> um and you know what sort of feedback have you guys received from it um yeah i think everybody who watched it like texted us and said hey it was yeah. a great great show we saw the footage it looked awesome they did like some cool like um video editing like live like imposing like you know different images over each other yeah yeah it's uh it, it's quite interesting really because obviously we talk about the, the pandemic because you know it has affected us all but you know live streams have come out of the pandemic especially for, in relation to the music industry it's quite a new concept um and obviously you haven't experienced it yourself now um you know do you believe that you know they'll remain a viable commodity for the music industry going forward is it something that you think even after the pandemic is fully gone if that ever happens um you know that live streams would um still have a place um i think that they'll definitely dissipate in terms of relevance i mean it's already been yeah. a lot less relevant i mean like the beginning of the pandemic everybody was on instagram live and everyone yeah. was trying to like sort of like mold their thing we didn't really do too much of it because we sort of figured like you know we're such a live band and like a big part of the band is like the experience of coming to our shows and like yeah. seeing other fans and it's very like community based and we didn't have any music to promote so we weren't super worried about doing a bunch of live streams we kind of just wanted to like work on our music and like make a bunch of like songs that we were really proud of so that when the time came and it was appropriate for us to go on tour again it would just be all very prepared for yeah but yeah i think they're cool and i don't mind doing them if if it's like a live show like that but i think that it really is better to like be there in person and like you know wait online and meet people who also share yeah. this interest with you and sort of like create like this real life scene yeah definitely i mean live music is um unlike anything else really in the world you know the togetherness the community yeah it's you know a show um is very very hard to replicate but um i mean obviously we've we've the live streams you you have got uh assist perhaps people who um you know for health reasons can't get out to shows or for financial reasons obviously going back to the themes of the yes. uh, the album that can't perhaps get out to shows um and you know just ge geographical issues as well so i think you know personally i think you know that there, there's definitely um some stock in them in the future but as you say you know live totally totally i agree i think i think that um yeah for the for the for those instances yeah it's great yeah um but as we said you can't beat uh real live shows and it just so happens that you guys very shortly will be um hopping on what i assume will be a plane to come across the, the pond uh to mm -hmm. the uk <laughs> for a uh, run of headline dates you know how excited are you to be coming across the uk after everything's happened in the last couple of years so excited it's yeah. been you know a while and england is like a second home for us our band's always been heavily embraced we really love the country all the shows usually are really fun 
Yeah. There's a very robust music scene in the UK and it's just always awesome to come over there. It feel it really does feel like our band's second home. Yeah, yeah. No, a lot of American acts feel feel the same way, you know. As you said, there's a yeah. very vibrant scene across <laughs> here. And we, we can't wait wait to get you across here. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a very exciting tour. Obviously, again, listeners, you need to search out some tickets um, and get, pop along to a show. There's eleven shows. Uh, with a, a pretty decent geographical mm-hmm. spread, actually, a lot of uh, American bands that come across um, will only play the major cities, or they'll you know target certain regions. Whereas, at yeah, well, we got we got to show the UK some love. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I was really impressed with yeah. the geographical uh, spread, um, and obviously the the London shows for me though are always the kind of barometer of um, a success factor or where a band currently are. And obviously you guys are going to be playing the Electric Ballroom in Camden, which, you know, is a fantastic venue in its own right. But it's actually the biggest uh, London headline show, I believe, that you guys are going to have played. So, yeah, is that something you guys um, monitor, you know, the, the size of the shows? Is it something you pay attention to? And, you know, how excited are you to be getting into Camden? Yes and no. For example, like, I really don't know that much about the Electric Ballroom, yeah. but um we're always excited to be moving up we sold out coco actually yeah. on our second record and that was the biggest headlining show we had ever done so it feels really good to come back to london and be in an even bigger room and hopefully sell that show out too yeah no i mean the electric ballroom is actually not very far from the coco and uh, it's uh yeah got a, a slightly bigger capacity um so, you know, it's going to be a, a fantastic show, as you know, all the shows are going to be. So, you know, for people that are perhaps humming and hawing over, they want to get a ticket, you know, what should fans expect from the shows? Um, I think they should expect, like, a really live animated show with um, a lot of new music, but also some classics. You know, yeah. we've been playing a bunch of old stuff. And um, as a live band, you know, we have the reputation we're always more loud and more insane than our records. And I think that even though we've made a pretty crazy third album, it's still holding true that the live show is really um, just uh, really bombastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can't help it. You know, we just, we love playing live. So we're always going to be wanting to turn on the distortion pedal and just like go off. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, having previously caught you uh, myself, I can strongly encourage listeners to pop along. It'll be a hell of an experience. Um, and yeah, obviously, can't wait, to, as we said, to get you guys uh, across the UK um, with a third album out now as well. You know, um, is it getting trickier for you guys to actually pick your set list? Um, not really there's like definite things that are like staples and um we're playing um most of the new record and we're gonna just be you know we we've been touring for a long time so we know the songs that like people like really really like respond to live and we've kind of picked all those because they're the most fun for us yeah yeah and that is and they're not always the most popular songs either like there are some songs that aren't that like you know they don't they they don't have as many streams as some of the others but there's just something about them live that we can't stop playing them yeah yeah and yeah i'm a firm believer in the fact that you know um songs are actually kind of living entities and they evolve over time and obviously live you said you're very um improvisational you know with uh with your live shows you know so obviously um you guys at this point must know the songs that that work clearly <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so um, so again, listeners, obviously, you know, um, you need to be checking out the uh, the videos and the songs that we talked about. Roll the dice. Um, who uh, put you up to this? And obviously, as well, check out the album that's coming out May sixth, Head Full of Sugar. Um, and please do try and pop along to one of the band's uh, shows over in the UK coming up this uh, April and uh, and end of March. Um, so Nick, yeah, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you um and obviously it's, it's great to hear um that you guys have uh, had some good shows um over at south by southwest and, and in america you know what would be your uh, final message for listeners today um i'm not sure just um thanks for yeah. having me on and uh we'll see you soon yeah no we definitely will um yeah thank you very much nick for joining us on- well thank you everyone for listening i really do hope you enjoyed that chat there with sunflower bean Make sure you check out their new album, 
Head Full of Sugar, coming out on May 6th. And do follow the band on their social media channels. They are on Instagram and Facebook at Sunflower Bean and on Twitter at Sunflower underscore Bean. And while you're at it, please do, if you would, follow us on social media. We are on Facebook at Full Pelt and on Twitter and Instagram at Full Pelt Music. And finally, if you would, please do hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, wherever you're watching or listening. And we'll be back soon for another edition of the Full Pelt Music podcast.